on Forma, we're going to create a site. And we're going to go ahead and type in the address. It, it will pop up here automatically, or you can also scroll in if you want to. The, or the square you see here is the size of the project, and you can zoom in and out to make that smaller or bigger. The first part is that we're loading contextual data. That is, we're fetching the terrain and we're setting up the whole project. And now we're allowing you to order data for that particular area. So in this case, only uh, OpenStreetMap buildings were available to this site. But depending on your region, you might have more options to go with as well. So I'm just adding parcels here as well so that I can create a site limit in, in a quite nice way. This is the Forma UI of the site. And very quickly, you will see that we have a full working model and I'm going to go ahead and create a site limit based on the property boundaries we added. And I'm going to use the property boundaries that we already had. Similar to Rhino, you can click space to redo the last command that you had. I'm going to uh, just rename this to existing proposal, just so that we have kind of a baseline before we go ahead and, and add more information. So I already have a Rhino model with a little bit more information. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new proposal that are ready to, to link. But if you don't have the connection to Rhino, you can go into the extension area and you can download it from there. So how the connection works is that you collect the URL address of that proposal and you go into Rhino and you run Forma. So just type in Forma, it will open up and let's copy in the, the URL and we're going to load site data. So this is going to probably take around 10, 20 seconds. Rhino doesn't really work well with coordinate systems. So if your model is somewhere in the world or close to zero, then we're using reference object and that you can move around and that will ultimately kind of change the connection or the placement of the former model inside Rhino and vice versa. So you'll see here right about maybe two, two, three more seconds. There we go. That I'm going to select the former layer site limit and you see that it doesn't line up currently. So I'm gonna just move it, just normal move and rotate commands so that it matches my site limit in the Rhino file. And once that it does that, we can then use it to, to send information back and forth in the correct placement. I have more context and better context here, I feel. So I'm going to go ahead and add that context and the proposal and send that to Forma. So I'll just select from the layers here and click send layers to Forma. And once that spinning wheel stops, then it's complete and we can go into Forma and just refresh. Give it a sec. And then suddenly you'll see that we have now uh, the Forma model with the Rhino model in geometry inside. And I'm going to spend a little time here cleaning up so that we have not duplicated buildings on around where I had better data. I'm going to work quite a lot with what is called a base and the proposal. What we're looking at right now is what is currently in the proposal, but I'm going to move the context over to the base. 
So I'm going into the base here. Think of it as the context for your proposal that is similar for every proposal that you're creating. So I'm just deleting the buildings I had from OpenStreetMap. And then I'll uh, move those buildings over afterwards. Having a base and a proposal allows us to compare apples to apples, which is very important. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select all of my buildings. And I'm going to deselect the proposal that are detailed from, from Rhino. And I'm simply right click, move to base. And you'll see this is what I'm left with. Ooh, I forgot the balconies and the, and the balustrades. So I'm just going to move that back. All right, now we have a context. I'm going to go ahead and run sun hours and daylight potential analysis for this so that it runs while we're building the other proposal. In general, it's this easy when it comes to running an analysis. You pick the one you want. There might be a very short setup thing, just selecting the dates and then run analysis. I want to create a new proposal so I have something to compare the Rhino model with. So I'm just using here a line building tool. Right now I'm just using a center line, but you could also use a line for either kind of the inner facade or the outer facade as well. And with line buildings, which is an automation, you have a little bit more extra things with it. You can have sections, you can change the width and height, and you can pick where those sections are aligned. And I'm just going to add basic building here as well. That's what we call buildings that don't kind of have an automation to it. And here we have our first proposal, but I want to make it a little bit more aligned with the context. And I'll just make it a little wider and add a, add a, uh, I'll add a more, uh, one more floor. So I'm going to make it a little bit more kind of connected to the place I'm building. So I'm going to open the building in 3D Sketch, which works similar to SketchUp in the sense that it works with faces and you can push pull and create lines and such. But it's very powerful in its smartness. For this case, I'm just going to pull it back a little bit more. And as you can see, it's quite responsive and, and you can show your intention quite a lot faster. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm also going to add a balcony. Let's just make a cuboid in here. Uh, and I'm going to just hit tab to have a little bit more control um, and let's pull that down and you can see from the prompts that our analysis are, are finished already uh, but i'm just going to finish this proposal up and then run some analysis on this one as well again same thing what's quite nice here is that 3d sketch is really good at mitering it miters the edges for what you're doing which makes the process very fast and intuitive. I'm going to do the same thing here with push-pull just to, to give you another example. So just add that up five meters and I'm going to push it in. And there you have a mitered edge. And then we're going to go ahead and run the same analyses. So the daylight potential and the sun hours. And you'll see here that I've pre-added in four dates. The software remembers that I don't have to kind of add the same things again and again. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to add a few camera angles. 
So these can be used just so that you always have the same angles, but it can also be used for creating presentations and using in inside compare. We'll do both uh, later on. I'll just add a top view here as well. Let's go ahead and compare the two proposals that we have. Let's invite members first. You can either type in here or you can simply uh, copy paste directly from an Excel sheet or from Outlook. You, you don't have to do one by one and you can pick access rights that you want them, either a collaborator or a view. You can send them an invite link instead of an email or you can push an email their way. Let's compare. You pick two proposals or more and then click compare. That will open the two proposals that we've selected in a view or two viewports that are synced. So when we move side to side, you'll see that they're synced. And we can go ahead and drag and drop the finished analyses. Here we go. We're able to create highlights for you from the stats because we understand that stats can be a little bit tricky to see. And you can tweak what you want those highlights to show you as well. For now, I'm going to hide the panels and trim the results down to only showing areas with four hours or less sunlight. So you'll see the left proposal is performing better than the right one at the, at the moment. And you can even go in and inspect specific points. You can choose the time intervals, the dates that you want to see. You don't have to do two different proposals. You can do the same proposal with different analyses side by side. You can split this whole view up in four if you want. Forma also has what is called a Forma board. It's a whiteboard tool where we can create presentations or collaborate. So similar to Miro, it's just that this is connected straight into Forma with your data available. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the data that we created now for uh, both of the proposals. The board has the same functionality as you would expect in terms of um, aligning functions, etc. But we're also able to pick what stats do you want to be shown for each uh, widget. And you can also change the sizes and camera angles as well. But for the area metrics, you also can pick what stats you want to be able to show. So I'm just going to align these through some shortcuts uh, for speed. And this white burning tool has what you expect. You can even connect your Revit model and get your sheet directly from inside the Revit model to be displayed in here. So it's to enhance that collaboration feature and create presentations just straight out of the box. Since we, I added Ben earlier, we can also tag him here and then he'll get an email about progress or comment if you need to discuss something or you need a second pair of eyes. And this goes down so you can kind of keep commenting um, like you would normally. And we can create presentations. I'm just going to use those frames as my slides. You can rename them, you can change them. You can click back and forth from the presentations already. That was the demo.